Imagine being on one of the biggest hit Netflix shows of all time. Now imagine being a musician at heart who works on music when you are not shooting said show and quietly releases albums under a moniker. Such is the case for Joe Keery, who previously was best known for his role as Steve Harrington on Stranger Things and is now known as a hit maker who simply goes by Joe. I'm your host, Tamara Dia, and this is The Spout Podcast, where famous people spout off about more than what they're famous for. And today, that's Joe. Okay, let's start at the top because I feel like a lot of people are mispronouncing it. So just to set the record straight, your artist name is spelled D-J-O, but it's pronounced Joe, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mm -hmm. where did the inspiration Mm -hmm. for that moniker come from? I was, it was like, I was releasing music the next day and I had a different band name and I realized I can't name that it that. And so I thought, what's kind of something that's similar to my own name. I kind of like Django Reinhardt. I, I thought, eh, that'd be kind of like an interesting thing. It's like my name, but it isn't my name. Turned out to be like the most confusing thing ever, but that's okay. That's good. It, it gets, it's like a little uh, tongue in cheek thing for people to figure out for you. <laughs> All right. So back in yeah. 2022, you released your sophomore album, Decide, which had the track End of Beginning on it, a track which didn't really find mm-hmm. its legs until a few months back when it went viral. So when did you first realize like, whoa, something crazy is happening with this song? I guess... Um, my friend and collaborator adam tyne who we work on the music together his wife carolina is a librarian and she had seen uh the song doing something either it was trending or it was being used for like videos or something so she was the first person who made me aware but you never really know to what extent it will kind of continue and it just sort of kind of kept going so yeah that was kind of the first I had heard. Of yeah. And it. well, since then it's hit number well, one on multiple Spotify charts. It's close to cracking the top 10 on the Billboard yeah. Hot 100. It's garnered over 35 yeah, billion impressions on TikTok. I mean, you know, it, it, it really, that's a yeah. Big I mean, yeah. Is that shocking to you? Yeah. I, it just is all like, it's crazy because it's like you hear these mm-hmm. stats and it is hard for me to really kind of I don't really understand it because my life really isn't different mm-hmm. in any way. I'm just sort of like still kind of doing the same old thing and like working on the show and hanging out. So it's kind of cool to hear and, and just crazy. Yeah. Really. Well, what is it about the song? Do you think that's connecting so deeply with people? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a personal song for me. It's about going back to a place where I kind of had my formative years and sort of feeling like, so much has changed um but you know life is weird because every every day it opens up a little bit wider and when you kind of go back to you know your past all the problems that you had seem so trivial and uh, it's easy to kind of look at everything with rose tinted glasses so like everybody has that everybody has that experience So, so so maybe it's that um but in terms of like why it's done sort of what it's done i don't yeah i I couldn't did you realize at the time when you were writing it that it was going to become this new chicago anthem no not at all no absolutely not it was um kind of a late addition to that album and uh it was a song that was really quick and kind of flowed pretty quickly in terms of the creation of it and that for me always is a good thing and um yeah, no, just just was another one of one of yeah. the songs. Well, a little while back, you were photographed leaving the same recording studio as Taylor Swift, and the internet ran wild sure. with the thought of a potential collaboration between the two of you. So, what exactly happened there? I was just, you know, she records famously at that studio, um, and I've been working there since like the fall of 2022, and I just happened to be there the day that she was there, mm-hmm. and she's really nice. I mean, I've met her a couple of times. She's before anything happened with this track, she said, "Hey, I really love that track of yours in the beginning." So, oh. you know, it's kind of yeah, funny, but no, we, you know, we've never made music together, but you never know. Who knows? Maybe one day. Yeah. We'll, we'll, so Taylor Swift, like initially, was like, "Oh, end of beginning. That's the one." She just said that she had heard the song, um, and you know, obviously, I'm like, <laughs> "What? You heard that song? How the hell did you hear that song?" Um, 
but she's like a she's like a music lover really and she's also so hip to you know new music and things that are coming out and so it i guess it's not shocking to me because she's like a big fan of music and just digs around and finds stuff so um somehow came across her desk and she listened to it and then said that she liked it really nice. really yeah. nice well i mean obviously you mentioned you're in a studio working on music so does that mean new music is coming out a new album on the way what can you tell us yeah that's the goal i mean since this uh wrapped i guess it would have we were we were done recording it in like um i guess it would have been 2022 in like the spring of 2022 so since then i've basically just been stockpiling songs and then working at the studio and uh yeah hopefully a new album soon i don't know exactly when i'm kind of stuck down in atlanta working yeah. on the show so i kind of like will go up and work a bit or work down here and sort of it's a little all over the place so i'm trying to trying to trying to get it done though sooner rather than later before you know, before there's too much stuff to yeah. choose from, I well, guess. Well, speaking of working on the show, before the world at large know, knew you as Joe the Hitmaker, we knew you as Steve Harrington on Stranger <laughs> Things. Um, you just mentioned you're, you started shooting. We all know it's the final season, which must feel pretty bittersweet after such a long and successful run. How are you feeling now that you're at the end of this? Well, it feels pretty normal at the time, or at, at this time that I'm in right now. Uh because we're just working um it's also there's a lot of work to be done so it doesn't necessarily feel like the impending end every day or anything like that i'm sure once we get a little further along the reality will kind of like uh, sort of sink in but for right now business as usual spirits are high we're just you know plunking away and trying to trying to serve these scripts that these guys have written and do our best job because once again, they've like come come through in a cool way and written some unbelievable stuff. So just trying to do the material so what justice. What can fans expect in the final season? Just yeah. insanity. Just it's it, it will scratch the itch. I think. Well, I mean, are you ready to say goodbye to Steve Harrington? I know you've lived with him for so many years now. Yeah, yeah, I have. It's crazy um, that I've had this haircut for ten years. <laughs> um, but. I'll def I'll I'll miss it for sure. I'll miss the, the people is what I'll really miss, and the experience of being so comfortable making something and really understanding the tone of something like that. But also, it's really exciting, I think, and it's you know, every ending is kind of the beginning of this new oppor of a new opportunity, and I'm I'm really looking forward to kind of. Uh, Although it will be an uncomfortable change, it, it'll be a necessary change, I think, for everybody because everything's got to end. And um, it'll be really exciting to see sort of what everybody else gets up to. But I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of what yeah, I get up well, to as well. Too. You know, I actually interviewed... Yeah, that's, true. Oh, that's nice. Um, you know, I actually interviewed the kids of Stranger Things a while back. Well, they're not even kids anymore at this point. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, I'm more... <laughs> no, they're like adults. Full, full, full adults now. <laughs> you know... A majority of them yeah. are all musicians, you know, Millie, Finn, Gaten, Caleb. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have there been any talks about a musical collaboration between you guys? I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about music and stuff. We're not necessarily um, going to, like, write an album or anything like that. But, you know, Finn, Finn obviously is always working on stuff. And we're, he's super interested in gear. And so we'll talk about that. Maya's got her own stuff. Charlie's got, like, a, a little studio set up. So he's always working. Yeah, it's just sort of like, I feel like generally people who are creative in one way are most likely creative in some other way too. So although it's kind of a, kind of a surprise, it's not really too much of a surprise. Yeah. Also. Well, you know, it's always like fascinating when someone becomes very successful, not only on screen, but, you know, as a musician. So is there, do you have like a favorite between the two mediums as an artist? Uh, no, not really. Um, it changes, I would say, probably goes back and forth. It's like, um, and they feed off of each other, I guess. It's like nice to take a break sometimes from uh, acting and be like, okay, I'm going to like put that aside and just like work on writing some songs. But then sometimes if you've been banging your head against like a piano for two days trying to figure something out, you're like, I don't want to be in charge of anything. I just want to be like an actor. I just want to like do the performance part and then I'll let you guys handle the um, how this thing is all going to go together. Um, so they, they, they're nice in that way. They, they can so be complimentary. almost like the best of both worlds. 
Yeah, I think so. And it's nice to be able to like, kind of, I, I'm spoiled. I get to be able to like kind of turn between these two things. So it's, um, yeah, it's not necessarily a situation I thought I'd find myself in, but I'm, I'm considered myself really lucky. You know, here. under one of your TikTok videos, which has over 30 million views, the top rated comment with, which has, let me get this right, 165,000 likes. Why did you do that? <laughs> This is just insane. It's like, who are all these people? Your fans. <laughs> what the heck? How did this happen? It's so funny, like, when those numbers, like, shock you. Because, I mean, for us, it seems normal. We're like, oh, you're talented and you're doing your thing. Like, why not? It makes sense. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, getting up and making my breakfast like everybody yeah, else, though. I guess it's sometimes it's like, I guess I'm not on social media generally, so when you, uh, when you, uh, so that seems yeah, like a lot of people. It is. <laughs> Wait, so it, I mean, that's fascinating yeah. too, you know, like, because, you know, the song obviously blew up on social media, but you just said you're not really on it like right. that. So what, what is your take on that? You know, like having this platform that blew up a song for you, but it's not really like something that you're into. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It is very weird. Yeah, I guess it's like, uh, I have, it's the way that the world is going. So to kind of like go against mm -hmm. social media is silly, but I guess for, for my own life, I, if I have social media, I so easily get sucked into it and end up wasting like a lot of my own time. So I kind of have to like put these, this like distance between myself and social media or else I will have no self-control and then I'll just be like, I'll wake up and I'll be on it or I'll go to bed and be on it. So that's, that's really kind of like the reason for, for that. I mean, I've, I've like written songs even about that. And now it's like really funny that the thing that like has yeah. introduced so many people to my music is social media. So, you know, got to be grateful. At the end of the day, it's other people on the other end yeah. of this thing. So, you know. It's kind of poetic yeah. in, a, in a really funny way. <laughs> it is. It so really is. back to that uh, question, I'm just going to ask um, that video that has over 30 million views. It has a top rated comment with yeah. 165,000 likes. And it's asking if you have seen the Steve Harrington edits that they all make on TikTok. So it's like, yeah, so they I make haven't. these like fan edits for you. That is like, you know, very dramatic you know, loving fan edits for you. So I had to ask on behalf of TikTok. Like a best of, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a highlight. Like a, a highlight, highlight reel. reel. Yeah, yeah, totally. But, but based, uh, I, but it I has like it. end of beginning I, as like the backtrack we, for it. I I don't think I could stomach <laughs> it. I, I thank you, but I don't think I could stomach it. <laughs> it's funny because someone asked Pedro Pascal that and he admitted that he would go on and look at those videos of, of the fan edits to make him feel better about himself on days when he wasn't feeling so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah. so I don't uh, know. Maybe one day it. you're having kind of a low day. You could always just look on, on there and see those videos. Might make you feel better. <laughs> At least I have yeah, this. Exactly. At least I have this. Well, you know, obviously <laughs> you're known for Stranger Things and, you know, being a musician. But you've since gone on to star in Fargo opposite John Hamm. Um, what was that experience like? Awesome. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, Noah Hawley, the creator of the show and the showrunner, is an incredible mind and just a uberly talented guy. And I was a fan of his before working with him. I liked the show a lot. Um, so, yeah, that was something that was a no-brainer for me. And when you're acting in projects, the thing I feel like that you look for is somebody who really is decisive and knows what they want and has a deep understanding of story and character and, you know, it's fun to work with as an actor. And he just, like, checks all those boxes. Um, and then the cast was amazing. Juno and John and Jennifer and David and Lamorne and Sam. Um, it was, it was like a, it felt like, you know, I've been working on this show for so long on Stranger Things. Doing that felt like, okay, this is like, you know, it's a different challenge for me. And it was a good, uh. I don't know. It was just like a really good life experience, I guess, for me. Because a lot of, uh, when you're an actor, you're moving your whole life. I am I moved to Calgary for six months and relocated and my whole lifestyle changed. I had different friends. And so it was a tough experience in a lot of ways for me. I was going through some big changes in my own life. And one, though, that I look back on as an extremely rewarding one. So I'm very grateful for that experience. And 
Um, I'm happy that, uh, I'm happy that people seem to like the show. I've not seen all of it. I've seen most of it, but you know, I'll just skip my own scenes and <laughs> then, you know, but pe people Wait, seem to like it. you skip your so. own scenes? <laughs> For this one, whatever reason, don't really oh, like that's to so watch fascinating. it. So, you know, I can like well, Stranger Things. That's fun to watch. I'll like watch with my family and my parents and. It's like, it's a big show, but for this, for, you know, it goes in waves. Sometimes I feel like I can kind of stomach it. And then some other times I'm like, do not, the last thing I want to do is watch this show. Wow. Yeah, for, yeah. for me. Are you for just like uncomfortable own. watching yourself, yeah. like in certain roles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. It's just like, can be yeah. kind of uncomfortable. Well, you have another big role coming up yeah. uh, opposite Liam Neeson uh, with cold storage. What, right. what was that like working with Liam yeah, Neeson? Fun. I mean, whoa. <laughs> insane. Really insane. Um, yeah. And Georgina too. And Leslie, was, I mean, everybody on that job was really good. And it was a real wild, um, job. It was, um, you know, and it was also very quick. It was right after Fargo. It was like, I flew there to there. It was like, Holy, Oh my God. Okay. Now we're doing this now. And then, um, also working with Johnny and David Kep too, who's just somebody who is, oh my God, he's amazing. He's written so many great things. He's a novelist. He's a screenwriter. He's like a director. He's great. So yeah, I'm excited. I've not seen that one. We'll see. Well, maybe I'll watch. You'll actually watch those it. scenes. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, you know, what's next for you? You know, we, we know like potentially new music is coming out. Do you have any other projects in the work? Well, you know, always, uh, always handing out the old yeah. resume on the street <laughs> corner saying, Hey, you guys need a guy over here. I can do that. Sure. I can play a teenager. Um, so in terms of acting stuff right now, I'm in stranger mm -hmm. things world. And then I'm just trying to finish this album and then hopefully put some good time aside and, uh, do a mm -hmm. proper tour. At some point, it's always something that I've wanted to do, and it would be a real cool experience to, like, take the amount of time. I have a huge respect for touring musicians. Doing a live show like that is insane. Yeah. It's truly crazy that people do it. I don't know how Taylor Swift yeah. is not dead. She has been touring for, like, over a year, doing a three-hour show. It's unbelievable. Um, it is unbelievable. Uh, so... Yeah, I would love to, you know, muster an ounce of that and try to, you know, create a live show that's really cool and just like give something back to the fans that they would really like to see. And I'm a big fan of like theater and production. So to see like a live thing would be really cool. And yeah, that's kind of what I want to focus nice. on right now. All right. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice to talk with you, Joe. And congratulations on everything. Dying to, to see the new season of Stranger Things and hopefully hear some good new music from you. I'm I I feel yeah. the same way. You're, we'll, we'll see. You're excited to of, watch Stranger Things and hear good music from yourself. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I hope I hope yeah, I hope I'm I get sure both. you will. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. <laughs> it's now uh, Eric Zachary and Tamara Dia. No longer. I I know I I have the same level of handsomeness as Joe Keery, uh, but <laughs> here we are. Or Joe, as I, you know, I don't know which version of we have to refer to him as yet, but excellent interview, Tamara. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it was really yeah. fun to talk to him and, um, you know, obviously talk about his new, or that song Blowing Up and yeah. Stranger Things. And yeah, we just, it was a really fun conversation. And uh, He was such a cool guy. Yeah, I, I got a chance to briefly chat with him before you guys started too. And, uh, you know, he went to school uh, in Chicago, which is where I'm from. And it's funny because we have a lot of like open air bars that are starting to like open up for the summer. Oh, nice. And you'll hear probably once a night that song being covered on the street, which is cool. Oh, yeah. No, it's I mean, yeah. it's really incredible. The fact that he kind of made a Chicago anthem without meaning to. <laughs> yeah. And then it like hit two years later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Let's jump into it. Got a lot of extra news to go over. First and yeah. foremost, Billie Eilish, her third studio album, official studio album, uh, Hit Me Hard and Soft is out. Now, we've talked about this before on the podcast. We love the fact that she didn't let us hear any of this. I mean, there was little snippets, little yeah. you know sneak peeks, but for the most part, she didn't do the traditional single or even singles yeah. uh, leading up to it. We got all the album, 10 songs in total, all caps yeah. today. <laughs> Initial reactions, Tamara, thoughts? Uh, well, I think there's an immediate hit that has come off the album, which is Lunch, which she kind of teased mm -hmm. uh, throughout the week um, just during her shows. Sure. Uh, you know, it's 
salacious and sexy and fun. And uh, it, it, you know, obviously is very tongue in cheek or never mind. I was going to make a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll let your mind wander there. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's, it's a great track. And, and again, like I love that she's leaning into different parts of her personality that she's previously kind of hidden. Um, yeah. Like, uh, have you heard the whole album yet? What are your thoughts? I have, I've skimmed, uh, but I've listened to every track uh, to the best of my ability. It's been a, a crazy Friday. Uh, I personally obviously launches the hit. I mean, that yeah. goes without saying yeah. I like birds of a feather a lot. And I really, really like uh, the the French one that I'm going to butcher, but L'Amour de Ma Vie. I'm <laughs> sure I nailed that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but I love the ballad of that. I, I, to me, it's a very modernized version of Ocean Eyes with mm -hmm. a different production approach. Uh, we know Phineas, her brother, is producing all of this stuff with her. Yeah. And I like that we can hear the maturity not only in Billy and her lyrics and singing, uh, but also the rollout in total and the production. It's just yeah. uh, this is an album that is going to be incredible live. Yes, I agree. I, also, like I noticed in this album, we're hearing a lot more electronic beats, which we don't really mm -hmm. get from Billy. So I right. think that's fascinating that they kind of opened up their genre a little bit in that regard. Uh, and then yeah. the album is already number one on Apple Music. And I'm sure it'll. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a uh, natural for Billy to. But I think it's also a testament to this pattern of these big artists just doing these drops without doing the lead up singles. So I think it's kind of fun. It, it allows the fans to choose the singles because they're going to see which of the songs are resonating so deeply. So I think it's like a, kind of a backwards way to do it, but I'm into it. Yeah, and it's the first time we've gotten it in this capacity. I mean, we've had surprise albums, sure, dropped yeah. on us. That happens all the time. Uh, but, you know, to, to know an album is coming and mm -hmm. there's still a level of rollout and tease, but we don't really hear anything other than what she really wants us to. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly not in a song in its entirety. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love fans and just, you know, basically the world choosing and, and representing what music uh, they want to hear the most, which is uh, and inherently what music and songwriting should be. Right. Right. Uh, we talk uh, to artists all the time and, and more often than not, they all agree. Um, songwriting is writing a song whether from its personal standpoint or a third person but the minute it's out it belongs to the audience totally. and i really love billy especially someone as big as her mm -hmm. um, just really taking that wholeheartedly uh, and putting it out there you yeah. know saying hey you guys choose you pick you tell me yeah and i think obviously you know obviously tiktok is being banned but i think tiktok is a testament to that you know where we're yeah. seeing songs like joe's for example finding its legs two years after its release because the fans are finding these songs and they're blowing them up because they genuinely love the music as opposed to a record label telling them like this is going to be the hit it's the fans mm -hmm. letting you know like no this is your hit which is really cool to see I, I like this turn yeah it's it's cool and I'm glad you just said that too about um, Joe and, and just TikTok and fans picking music in general mm -hmm. there's another unique approach we actually um, just talked to a group called the astronomers on our on my show XYZ uh, and they did a really really cool rollout kind of the opposite where they've been putting out a song out every two weeks which is more in line with oh. the singles but they were all from a coherent album and they all work together and then today the whole album completed the story completed but they started the rollout in January oh. but they still did it in terms of one cohesive story as opposed to just a bunch of single songs so there's a bunch of ways to do it I just like that no one's really fitting into this just machine that's been yeah. dominating music for 30 40 50 years now it's like hey there's a bunch of different ways to do it and I, I really appreciate people going about it in unique ways yeah same uh, speaking of uniqueness Kendrick Lamar <laughs> occupying both the number one and number three spot on the Billboard Hot 100 charts of course nothing like us and euphoria not like uh, us <laughs> Not like us, thank you. I'm reading this very fast. Uh, yeah, I, you're listen. You're the Kendrick representative here, so I, I'm going to turn over to you before I embarrass myself further and get myself caught in this beef. Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I, I, I have to say, not like us because I'm an LA girl, and everywhere okay. you go, you hear this song bumping out of the cars when you guys come visit this week. I'm sure you'll you'll get a, a little taste of that. It's become very much an LA anthem, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I think uh, even even on the charts, Kendrick has won this beef, and, and that's a testament oh, yeah. to him occupying number one and three, and Jake uh, Drake coming in at number seven uh, with Family Matters. So I, you know. I, I'm hoping this is the end of the beef. You know, it's, it was mm -hmm. a very tumultuous couple weeks, not just for them, but all of us as fans, like getting the, the le it felt like we were getting jabbed left and right by these random releases. Um, and it, it was fun while it lasted, but I was exhausted by it. <laughs>
<laughs> and I love the, the idea of you being physically exhausted. I was. By these I was. I was like, I, I felt like I was in the ring with them. I'm like, you know, like, bam, bam, like getting hit left and right. Um, although in the end, as we all know, I feel like Kendrick Lamar is the one that's left standing. So a yes. uh, question for you. Do you hit think me. that Drake losing this beef uh, is going to in any way affect him as an artist and, uh, you know, as a, someone who's such a huge name in the rap game. Well, Drake's sensitive. So, yeah, I think <laughs> it's going to affect him regardless. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we've been knowing about Drake. Um, in terms of his popularity or, or standing ability, I don't think so. Yeah. I think if he continues to try to hang on to this beef, it could, you know, deter him from putting out better music that he's more focused on. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, Drake does what Drake wants to do. We know this. Uh, I don't think it's going to have a few, a few huge effect because there's going to be two people attending the shows. One that are the <laughs> diehard Drake fans. Right. Two are the people that want to see how he's doing, regardless if they like him or not. So he's still going to be selling out arenas. Uh, I don't think that's coming to an end anytime soon. I do love my very favorite part about this beef is someone that doesn't really have a yeah. horse in the race. Uh, it's just Drake having to tweet the Canadian uh, news agency that kept putting uh, helicopters above his house. Yeah, He's like, totally. listen, I'm trying to sleep, yeah. y'all. Like, anytime after three is great, please. Yeah, like, can we get on a schedule here? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, we can maybe potentially put this to bed until Drake drops an album, which he kind of teased that he was in the studio working on. Um, so Drake's I, always teasing an album. He's always teasing music. That's true. Always. That's true. You know, I, I would like to see, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind if Drake disappeared for a little bit, not in a mean way, not in a mean way, but in, in like a way that like artists become very oversaturated, you know, like mm -hmm. I think Jennifer Lopez is experiencing that right now at the moment too. It's like when they have, there's in the public eye so much, like they're in our faces, like there's a, a resentment that builds and then the yeah. people start to tear them down a little bit. Um, so I, I think breaks are good. It, it's good to kind of step away and just kind of like let people wonder and then come back out and be like, bam, did you miss me? Yeah. Fans love mystery, and yeah. Kendrick's always mastered that. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of artists that do it very well, and they literally disappear. Yep. Uh, but I, I think to your point, and that's you know kind of what we can end on with that, is that Drake is so in the public eye in every facet of his life, whether it's music-related yep. or not, that, yeah, he's already lost the fight before it started because just Kendrick had all the information he needed, yeah. period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it was a... Like I said, like I'm exhausted by it. I felt like I was uh, getting punched in the face by Kendrick too, just because it was like so vicious at points. Um, right. But you know, that's that's part of the rap game. You got to fight for your spot, and I feel like Kendrick definitely earned it. There you go, uh, Zayn Malik. He's back. Yeah. Fourth studio album, Room Under Stairs, a country album, country leaning album. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna immediately turn to you before I say anything. <laughs> Let's discuss thoughts on, on Zane going country. Well, we're seeing this theme, you know, with a lot of artists. We, we've spoken to a few artists recently um, on Spout Podcast who've all kind of moved into the direction of country lately. Obviously, Beyonce feels like she's kind of, or we feel like Beyonce potentially spearheaded this turn of genres for a lot of artists. Um, you know, I'll say this about Zane. Um, I, I was always a Zane fan. Uh, I you know, back in the days of One Direction and when he was leaving, I genuinely thought that he would be the breakout solo artist. Really? Um, so it, it, it was a surprise that he kind of fell short in that regard. And, and um, I think a lot of that has to do with maybe just his personality because he doesn't like being in the spotlight. Whereas someone like Harry, who is also supremely talented, not to take away from their talent, um, you know, shines and thrives in those uh, spotlights. So, um yeah, I, 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 he recently did an uh, interview where he spoke about 2021's album, Nobody Is Listening, and he joked that that was an appropriate title because nobody was listening. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think Zayn is trying to find his footing, and I think, um, you know, potentially country could be a fun sector for him to move towards, but it, it's hard to think of a British artist going country, you know? It's a... Yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot. Country is actually very big in the UK, um, but it's funny, you know, it's it's being turned to as a genre of novelty when right. 
in its own right, I know you've recently dove back into the country world in, in Nashville and, yeah, and inter interviewed a lot of artists down there. Um, you know, it's it's nothing to laugh at. It's it's probably one of the longest standing formats of radio airplay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think the country world, and I'm not a massive country fan. I've just worked in it, and I know a lot of people in it. A lot of my friends are in it. Are, are kind of maybe not offended is the right word, but yeah. they're they're irked that people are like, well. You know, screw it. Let's try country. Let's right. go this way. And it's like it, it's not something to be thrown around. It'd be like a country artist saying, let me try hip hop. Yeah. You know, it, would, it wouldn't land right. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, hip hop felt this way for years because there was sure. a, a very long time, especially like in the early aughts, like 2003 to 2008. There was like a period yeah. where a lot of these artists were suddenly trying hip hop. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see how the country fans would feel now. Like, you know, it's kind of like stepping in. Like, why are you stepping in my territory? You, where were you guys like the last 30 years, you know? Yeah. So I get that. But at the same time, like, you know, again, I'm bring up Beyonce just as an example. Like it. She did it so Second well. Second time. Okay. I'm counting how many <laughs> but, times you bring up Beyonce each podcast. <laughs> the Beyonce counter in the corner. Yes. Um, but because she did it so well, I think that she allowed other artists to think that they could do it too. And I think, yeah. you know, and, and that's a good thing. You know, as an artist, you want to be expanding your your horizons and not being putting out the same album over and over. Where, where's the, What's the point of that, you know? Yeah. And, and to defend the Beyonce side of it, Beyonce wasn't doing country as a novelty. She grew Correct. up on country music and yeah. she can perform it and has performed it before. Yes. It's not like she's just like, mm, let me try it. Yeah, yeah. Um, totally. we're, I'm not saying Zane's doing that, but yeah. I'm getting that from a lot of records lately. Now, not to say, I mean, at the end of the day, what are genres anyway? I mean, yeah. there's country fans that can't decide what country is. There's hip hop fans that totally. can't decide what hip, hip hop is. People are always going to fight. Music subjective, art is subjective. Um, I, I just think that we're we're hitting this wall of let's define it because of the major market value when you have to turn to which radio station is it going to play on uh what you know chart is it going to land on? what right. category is it going to and the grammys yesterday i actually just spoke to uh, her name is charlotte cardin she's a massive massive star in canada but she's finally breaking through to the states on a very real level but she's won album of the year at the junos oh, multiple wow. times and we are just learning about her, you know, yeah. generally in the U.S. But what I love is we, her and I talked about how much music is valued as a whole and art as a whole in Canada. Canada has a rule. It's actually a, a, a federal rule um, that a certain amount of their playlist has to be made up by Canadian born artists oh. on radio stations there. So they're protecting, you know, where people are from, the origin of their country, which is amazing. Um, I think it would be interesting if, you know, it might be a little... Uh, overzealous to say country stations, you know, pick, okay, let's say we let 10% of our, our audience be people who didn't traditionally start in the genre. Mm. You know, you, it's a, it's a fun idea in my head. Um, it could obviously be turned for evil very quickly, but just something <laughs> I was thinking about. Uh, yeah. You know, what would be interesting to me is like, you know, speaking of Canada and we're talking about artists, uh, I, I'm itching for a new Bieber album, like many people, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. like, what what would you do if like Bieber came out and was like, my next album is going to be a country album? At that point, I'm packing it in because yeah. then that's just <laughs> solidifying everything we just talked about. And I'm not yeah. saying Bieber couldn't do country. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. Holy is is a country leading track, yeah, um, totally. for sure. It just the the opportunism of sure. of it happening right now would just really get me. Yeah, They'd be yeah, like, yeah. all right, man. I'm not even a country fan, but I got to step in here and be like, let's break. Let's yeah. break for a second. No, it, it is interesting, you know, um, this this move into country lately. And honestly, like if it does bring more visibility to the genre itself. So, sure. you know, especially for like uh, like the CMT awards, like big, big organizations like that, like it only will serve to uh propel the genre into a, a more mainstream space. I think it's more so the, the, the audience, like, do they want it to be mainstream? Absolutely. Uh, let's end on this, Tamara. It is New Music Friday at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. A bunch of new stuff came out today. Is there any song, single song, not from the Billy album, <laughs> that's jumping out to you? I mean, I was going to say lunch. I literally listened to it three times in a row on my run this morning. Um, Shoot. Oh, oh, uh, I do. Well, it's not new music, but he is newly on the Hot 100 chart is a Tommy Richmond million dollar baby. Great song. Yeah. Jordan, uh, my co-host and producer at my other show is like, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Band Camino put out a three song EP today. Uh, I'm more the pop punk leaning guy. Their mm -hmm. song Nostalgia is incredible. Uh, the Astronomers who I was talking about, uh, which they did the multi month 
release. They uh, they just put out the the final piece today. A lot of good music. Hardy speaking country. Um, Hardy's an example of a country artist breaking out, and he's going more pop and and rock now. Even though it's kind of where he started, but traditionally he's been on tour with Morgan Wallen and and that crew. Uh, mm-hmm. And he just put out a song called Psycho. Which if you need a reason to be mad at the world, listen to that. Like, All right, I li- you can just break stuff. I it's like those great. kind of songs. I mean, yeah. for specific moments, but yeah, yes, I like when people make songs like. Hopefully that. not when like yeah. you're soothing a friend, but yeah, you know, if you're <laughs> like, it's a great workout track. It's a great the like of yoga. the world. Yeah. <laughs> Hot yoga to hearty yeah, psycho. Exactly. There you go. That's. I don't know if we can end on something better than that. Tamara, I appreciate you. I love you. We'll you talk too. soon. All right. All right bye. E.